In the words of Monty Python, Albatross, Albatross, can we get your Albatross? You can see the title of this movie, it's already... Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stop. Anyhow guys, right, okay, we're having a review. I have a look at this scale we have down. Would be helpful if it was on the desk, wouldn't it? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, Wingnut's uh, Albatross kits. Uh, tell you a bit of a backstory of what's been going on. Um, obviously people have been mad about Wingnut's kits for ages. They decided to release some limited edition Albatross. Now you do get, um, oh I see, doing the Albatross and the Fouts as well. I'm not really keen on the Fouts, it's a weird aircraft, but the Albatross is a, a favourite, let's, let's put it that way. Um, you can see, for start, um, they do different versions. There's obviously this one like I've got. This is a Flying Circus. Uh, they do other things like uh, Yasta 18, I think, or Yasta 15, I can't remember. They've got Wooden Wonders, Bavarians, Bavarians 2. Um, I don't know if they've got Flying Circus 2, I don't know. But anyhow, they do a number of versions that you get. And you can pick and choose which ones you want to build. And it's as simple as that. Um, so yeah, this uh, they stopped the production of the Albatross kits in 2015. So this is basically a a fresh release, really, if I understand. I think they've just released some mouldings, and I think they will sell well because Albatross is kind of like a famous warbird from the First World War, along with the fucker DR1 that are later coming out from Wingnut. So yeah, I just thought I'll give a review and see what. It's like, I've not had a look at this yet, to tell you the truth, it's still sealed in the bag, so I've only had a look at the instructions, but we'll get to it now. Right, so, all that further ado, let me just change the camera around, and we'll get cracking. Okay, so this is the box, it just fits into the frame here, I can zoom it out, but you'll see the bottom of the legs. So. It's kind of weird, I do definitely need a nice, better overhead camera, but... You know how things are, but there we go. Okay, so start off with the box. It's very cardboardy, I will admit. You can almost feel like it's basically, it's designed to be a technical piece of work on some board paper or something like that, anyway. Um, yeah, that's basically, the design into the box has gone pretty well. That's a bit sad of me to say, but there we go. Okay, so this is, uh, it says 132 Albatross DV and DVA. These are, um, just to let you know, they do different versions. Uh, I've had a look, there's actually a bit of a difference between the two. The only difference is that the, um, there's with the DV, there is some control rods going from the column in the middle to the top of the wing, as the DVA has control through the wing. Simple as that, that's really the only difference with the two. I didn't know that until I had a look, but there we go. Okay, so having a look round, uh, this is obviously my one I picked out. This is Flying Circus, which you've got the D5s, the DVs. And uh, you do get some nice arcs on there. So you've got obviously a red version, black and white one, a wooden one with some black tail, a all green one, which is very too peculiar, and my personal favourite, which when I get around to this, I may build it, is this one here. And I bet you're thinking, why didn't I go for this version? Well, looks a bit too red for me, but there we go, that's my personal thing. Okay, right, so nice detail overall, just on the box. And I'm trying to find the code for this one. Just have a look. Can't find the code. Oh, here we go. Uh, 32905. There we go. So we do have some information on the side here. Uh, tell me about blah, blah, blah. I will trust D1s arrived in September 1916. Blah, blah, blah. Going for the D3s and to the D5s. Okay, so as I said beforehand, um, these sold out in 2015. So this is where you, know, you can get them properly now, 100%. So I'll just take the box off and straight away see ramped. Actually, I want to show you that two seconds. I don't see pop in there, but on the um, inside of the box, we do have some photographs of certain aircraft that are in this kit. So that's quite handy for you. So there's basically much information anywhere. And oh, okay, this is unusual. The kit is all in one great big bag. Including photo etch, and we have our instructions, our decals, well, our stencil marking options, 
and a huge very big sheet of decals underneath there. Okay, so I'll start off as always and go through the instructions for you guys pretty much not to bend thing. So it looks to me, um, as like I said, I've had a look through the instructions, but I've not had a look through the parts. Let's see if you guys are actually zoomed in properly. You are? Yes, you are. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Slide that down. Okay, so there's some of the information if you want to have a read through it, you can do. Um, I've had a look and I think these instructions are an exact copy that you'll get in every single Albatross kit. That are obviously the other ones you get, so these are the same. Uh, I know that much, I'll point that out in a second. So you've got some more technical details, more the history of the aircraft on the front here. And straight away we're into the colour callouts. The stuff you do and don'ts, don't eat it, don't swallow it, don't try and um, put a mask on your face, but there we go. Uh, albatross parts going on there. Not too much of a kit. Yeah, that's it, that's just sprues, guys. So, yeah, we've got A, B, one clear sprue, C, two of the Ds, E and F, and some photo etch parts. So there's not quite a lot of parts as I thought there would be. Hmm. Okay, straight away as always with the cockpit, we have installation of the framework fitting into the side there, your seats going in, we have a hand air pump by looks of things going in. Now this is the differences between the two, you've got the DV which is obviously this version, and you get DVA and DVA OAW, I'm not sure what it stands for, but there we go. Let's see if you guys actually, yeah you can see that more clearly. Okay. So I have to keep looking back, but it's confusing. Uh, we've got some switches and control columns at the side here, along with your <laughs> traffic, a tachometer at the front there. So as like I said, the difference between the DV and the DVAs, um, one of them has a, a spinner cable at the front here, they control rods for the top, whereas this one just pulls the control surfaces through the framework. And that's the only difference is really. You can see it in these photos here. Like again, we can not provide some nice photos. And um, we have some control surfaces popping up through the wing, from the fuselage up to the wing there. And that's really it. And it tells you more about it just here. Okay, so we've got the fuel tank, we've also the ammo uh, feeds going to the front here, along with some other bits and pieces, some what does it sell here? The empty shell shoots, that's really nicely detailed. Go in there, and then finally, what the owl aircraft should look like when it's all done. Uh, if you're up to your woodwork techniques, then a lot of woodwork is going to go into this project because, well, like most world war, first world aircraft, made the wood. Once again, some nice photos going off in there. Like I said, I think this, I think to myself, this is an exact copy as the out of production ones they've done. So the instructions are a standard copy. You'll get these all the same. The only difference is you'll get different stencils. Because I've noticed it says do this for this such and variant and this such for this variant. I'm like, okay. But they're not on there. So there we go. Okay, so um let's say here. Yeah, so we've got our Mercedes um Daver Blend engine fitted in. Also we have two variants here. Yeah, this is where things got confusing. Yeah, we do we have two sets of engines going in, but let me just have a quick look at what it says here. Um, okay. Just having a look. So once you start this project, you really have to go into your history and have a look at what you need to do with your aircraft. So once you've chosen the aircraft, you can't kind of stick to it really. So we have two different engines by lots of things. We have the Mercedes 160 horsepower D3 engine. Or we have the 180 horsepower and 200 horsepower AU engine. Um, two different variants. It does not say um, which aircraft is which, if you understand what I'm saying. So this is where you have to do your research and have a look into what project is which. Because, yeah, it's, it's going to lose you off track if not. So... Yeah, that's the only downside. It's a bit complicated if you're starting off to wing nuts, so 
there we go, have a read through as always. We have some more photographs going here, looks like a captured albatross and some more photos going on down in here. Moving back to the, uh, in the internal parts, we've got some more framework for the engine being fitted into there. We have some more control surfaces going in. It looks like we have a spark lever part of things. Going on in there, so I just want a bit of ink tile off the top. And uh, fitting your wheels, tail, elevators, and your spandals to the front there. Again, photo etch going on there. Uh, now we have some nice touches. We have some flare racks going in. We have some covers. We have some. Uh, some of these parts, most of these parts are optional here. Uh, you've got your uh, frameworks going in, like for your frame, for your. I have to think of the word then, windshield. So there's different sizes of that. You've also got some armour at the back. You've got some flare racks. You've got some other surfaces. I'm just reading it through what it says here. Um, just having a look through. So it says it's a headrest. It says DV, which is D5. It's a question mark, so it depends what albatross you had, whether it had them or not. Um, and it says uh, cut individual cow panels if removed from a fusastic diorama display. So it's telling you that uh, flare racks provided for considerably on individual aircraft. So there we go. Once again, you have to do your research into what aircraft had which, which is a pain, really, if I'm honest. Um, it's not a pain, really. It's just like this. See, these instructions are dedicated to the the old release ones, which don't do anymore. And somehow we've got to convert from these to the other ones. But no, uh, yeah, like I said, you have to do your research. Simple as. Anyway, I'm going off topic. Me um, for me moaning. We got our bottom wing fitted in. Some more detail parts going in there, including our struts, I can't think of the word then. Our top wing going on, including our radiators, different various of radiators being fitted onto the top there. Fitted onto the top wing, including some panels, box I think, trying to hit the head on those. That being fitted on, your landing gear going on, your fixed landing gear, your prop different designs, like I said. Like I say again, it doesn't tell you what design prop you have for your aircraft, but there we go. An option for a... What's that? Anometer. It looks like a speedometer to me, but there we go. And last but not least, your rigging. And that... Is it. Okay, so here's what I was saying. Your DV. Got some parts going from the top there. That is it. Okay, so we've got some more specifications to the Albatross underneath here. So yeah, like I'm saying, please do your research when going into this topic. Let's uh, so have a lot while so we've got. Okay, here's the. Um, you're still recording. You're still with us. Yeah. Are you? Yes, you are. Sorry about that. Okay, so here are the decals going in. In the nice resealed bag, I've noticed. Okay. So, let's have a look, it's all stuck together. Okay, have some decals inside here. I'm going to put them to a side, don't let them slip off the table. Okay, right. So these are the only photos they give you for the side of the aircraft, okay? So I'm guessing what's on this side is identical to the other side, pretty much. Um, so we've got option A, which is an all red aircraft. B, which is a black and white striped. C is a wood grain texture, but it does have some nice camo on the tail. Green, uh, sorry, D, which is a green <laughs> one all over, and this weird pattern on the side. And uh, last but not least, the E, which is all wood grain with the black tail slash fuselage including a nice white spin in the front there okay so have a look for the instructions it goes through your different mark options so this so the first page gives you the side panels and the rest of these pages give you what the wings are like so version a which was the all red one you saw earlier has this nice um 
top and bottom wing camouflage, including a Oh, this is actually quite nice. She's got a red fuselage, she's got a green and purple top side, light blue underside, and a yellow and black tail. And that's actually pretty nice, actually. I do like that now. <laughs> I just said that. Uh, the other black and white one that you saw earlier, again, black and white straps and tail, but we had this uh, lozenge, is it? This lozenge effect on the top surfaces and the underside there. And again, once again, for the C variants, we have some top and underside surfaces for the lozenge camouflage. Uh, the green one is basically all green, pretty much the fuselage, the top wing, and just the bottom wing is not a green, it's blue. That's really it. And last but not least, my favourite variants, which I will be doing, is the wood grain effects one, the E. So it's got this lozenge top side and underside as well. And that's really it, guys. That is really it for your your stencils and your decals, pretty much your shout outs. Okay, so the decals they are printed by Cartograph made in Italy. And I have to say these are cartograph decals, so you'll have no problems with these and unless you are basically very silly with what you do. You have very glossy. Very glossy indeed. Hmm. Just having a look there, you've even got 21, just notice very down here, you have some design for your actual aircraft, like some instructions, that is weird, but there we go, that is the decals all done dusted, well actually say decals, let's have a look at these down here, you can hear my chair creaking, not fat I swear. Okay, so these are those lodging, lozenge decals that you saw earlier. Just gently cut these out. The bag is actually very, very not tightly packed, but you know what I mean. Okay, so we get how many decks? How many sets of decals in here? Let's have a look. Okay. Oh wow, this is bright colours. Okay. So I um, think these are these all top surfaces, are they? Uh, five colour lozenge. We have our bottom coloured ones. And it looks like we have some stripes. I think these are for the rib tapes. Oh, that's nice. I didn't realise they are rib tapes. But there we are. That is really it with decals. It's basically as simple as that. Oh, that's it. I need to put that back like that and that like that. Are you sure the decals are like that on this aircraft? Uh, okay. Oh, actually, hold on. Going back to what I said before about the parts, it says use optional parts C2, E23, E34 for and Daimler Ben 6. To okay, so that's where it tells you what parts you need to be using for that particular aircraft. That is actually pretty handy now, I understand. So that's all done dusted. Um let's have a look. Okay, so we got some red rib takes going on the front here. Doesn't say are these the top wing ones? It looks like it. it. Looks like they're the top wing ones, these are the bottom wing ones. They look very bright for their colour. Okay. So that is that done. That's all the instructions and your decal sorted. Right, I'll move on to the parts now. Okay, so on with the parts now. Okay, like I said, it's all in great one great big bag. Uh, it's not resealable, it's just basically. Oh, that's lucky. Okay, so your photo etch is stapled onto the outside of the bag. <laughs> Pretty handy, I suppose, if you want that bent. And let's have a look. Okay, so the bag is actually open. And all the parts are here. Okay, so they're nicely all individually bagged. Nothing going to go wrong with them. Okay, so like I said, this is my first time looking at this Albatross kit. Nice looking aircraft, I will admit. Wow. Nice detail going in there. We'll go through all the sprues together. Okay, right, let's start off with this one. Put them down there, out of the way. 
Actually, yeah, start of it. Right, we got our. Come on, come on. Photo etch parts just down here. Oh, down, 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 down. There we go. Okay, so we have some photo etch parts just down there. We have our seat harnesses going there. This was a strap apparently that went around the fuselage. Our gun sights for our spandals, the air cool lets for our spandals. And we've got some nice, not stencils, but just um, plates. Just down And that is it. Okay. Right, so we'll go into this part. Okay, right, very, very carefully remove this. Have some nice uh, internal details going on it just in there. Um, a lot of functional parts in here. Our seat is actually very, very thin plastic, actually. That is actually incredible. Um, let's have a look. We have some nice control surfaces. Our... Let's have a look. Our exhaust, it's not hollowed out pretty much, so if you want to hollow it out for more detail, you can do. Um, like I said, a lot of framework going on in here. Obviously, that will be all done by woodwork. Um, I've just noticed, I don't know whether that's me or what, but we do have a tiny tiny little mount of flashing over that's not a problem that's not a problem at all tiny little bits um i've got some more control surfaces going in there we got some oxygen i think no i don't think that's oxygen i think that's water i think i'm not too sure anyway it's basically the basic stuff basic framework going all in there that is through a okay leave that to side out of the way and we come on to our next sprue, which is down here. Uh, this is a duplicate copy, so we're going to just review one of these. Uh, okay, this is your wheels and framework, and also your spandau ornament. You get two sets of spandaus because uh, one of them is solid plastic, and the other just has the... Ooh, that's very fragile actually. The metal barrel going through and obviously you'll wrap your cooling jackets from the photo etch around it. Simple as. Okay. Simple as. You've got some nice uh, plating on the side. I think that's actually metal plates for the wheels. Oh, actually you have the choice of metal plates or fabric. Hmm, that's pretty nicely handy. Okay, so that's a duplicate part. So there's two of them, but we're going to give you one. Uh, let's have a look what else we got. Okay, so here we have our two types of Mercedes engines, including our props. Once again, uh, cylinder and details are very, very nice. Um, some nice, tiny, easy breakable components on this one. Obviously, we, like I said earlier, we've got our different uh, props going on there. We have our flare racks on the bottom, including a flare pistol. So I just noticed that. We've got our tachometers, well, are they tachometer speedometers? Just on the side there. Also got our carburetors and our sumps going into the bottom just there. So that is, once again, some nice detail, including some nice um, thread detail on the props there. That'll be nice for you to do your wood grain if you are a fan of it. Um, if you are wondering what wood grain is, then you can go and check my video of how to make wood grain. That'll be a very nice touch. Uh, right, two last sprues to have a look at. We have the big wings. I say big wings, and are not actually quite big. Okay. So it looks like okay. You get two sets of different tails box of it. You get your elevator at the back. It's one great big solid elevator. Your tail, tail, <laughs> the tail, tail, <laughs> and also your top and lower wings going on in there. Okay, I will admit I oh actually hold on. No, oh, it's just a bit of um, plastic that's come off. 
Um, just having a look, I did actually think the wing surface would have been bigger for the Albatross, but then again, you never know. But there we go. Compared to what I'm building now, I can understand. I can understand entirely right. Okay, so that's one. Uh, last but not least, we have our beautiful, which actually, I think the fuselage looks actually bigger <laughs> than the wings themselves. Personally, that's my opinion. We have our, lastly, which is my favourite sprue, I must admit, is our... In that shiny plastic. There's, I've just noticed, um, if I'm going to zoom you guys in, do apologise, I haven't been doing a lot of that lately. If you zoom in and have a look right there on that tail, turn you around, so you guys see properly, you can see there's actually some beautiful um, mould surface detail. Just as tail, and you've got some brackets going on the bottom here, including the sprung the back here for the tail skid. Now, I'm going to have to admit, that is beautiful, because even for that little gap and those gaps from moulding, that is absolutely spot on. I'm not going to lie about that, that is actually really nice. Thumbs up for me for that one. Uh, last but not least, we have our, let's have a look, we've got some, I think these are parts for the engine just going up here, let's see if you guys out. We have some more parts for the engines just going on across there. These are probably your pipe work for your radiators, which, speaking of which, are just fitted here. Again, the grill detail is nice. There's not an option where you can have it closed. You've got your optional part for your headrest there, if your aircraft did have it, including your engine covers and the beautiful spinner. I don't think there's any... Oh, actually, there is. There is actually some internal framework going on there. But that... Is about it, guys. Right, I have to say, this is my favourite part of the um, the kit itself. The fuselage it just looks beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, guys, that is it. And I forgot, last but not least, we have our little bag of clear bits. That is it. We have our three different windshields that I pointed out earlier: a square one, a short curved one, and a big curved one. And that is it. That is, as they say, it. Okay, so one thing I've just learnt that if, well, I haven't just learnt it, advice, that if you basically um, have a wing nut kit and you want to put stuff back into the same box, it won't go back the same way because they're just beautifully packed all together. Um, as you saw from the uh, footage I just did, the aircraft is actually a very nice kit, I'm not going to lie. The only thing I say is do your research, do your homework have a look at which aircraft you want to do and pretty much try and stick to it as best you can because otherwise, um, I know if you're a rivet counter or if you're not and you just like to keep sim things simple then you know what to do okay so with that done that is a review of the, well I say brand new but the new let's say uh, Wingnut Albatross DV D5 okay so like I said there is more ones out there I know a couple of people have bought a load of them because obviously they're limited edition but I'm going to stick with this one personally I may buy another one in the future I may not it just depends how they are okay so with that thank you very much for watching hope this has given insight for you please take care during this um, crazy time and look forward to seeing you soon okay thank you like sub and comment and cheers and goodbye for now